Max Payne 3 by Rockstar Games allows you to walk through one of the most interactive and beautifully recreated versions of Sao Paulo, Brazil that's ever been featured in an interactive medium. Whilst taking control of slightly disgruntled, balding, Hawaiian shirt-wearing Michael DeSanta, the aim of Max Payne 3 is to prove to the locals that you are the best brain-flavoured slushy merchant there has ever been. And when you're not force-feeding random people assault rifle ammunition like you'd force-feed a picky eater some broccoli, you're usually watching one of the seven hours worth of cutscenes that this game has to offer. Or you're bending over and shoving a shotgun straight up the rectum of a government-paid militia member, turning them into a subsequent buckshot Pez dispenser. <laughs> this game is great. The gaming industry has changed, and just like the gaming industry, Max Payne is no longer the wise-cracking, cocky detective he used to be. In Max Payne 3, he's an old, grizzled, big, bold man who, well, let's just say, in the older versions of Max Payne, like 1 and 2, he would have happily told a joke about Y2K after blowing away a man who probably also has a wife and kids. But in this game, he's an adult. This is truly an adult's game, as Max Payne 3 is packed to the brim with as much nudity, gore, war crimes and whatever else adult things are as you can get. Pile of bodies? That's that- hey, you'll see a pile of bodies. Nude bare breasts? Hey, if that's what makes you an adult, you'll be on your deathbed by the time you've done playing Max Payne 3. Spooky, scary music and swearing? You're practically already dead, okay? This game ages you by about 200 years every time you play it. I feel like a veteran of war after playing Max Payne 3, and I've never left the country. The focus has been put on how new and different of a character Max Payne really is. This is not the Maximum Payne from the PS2 era, who can jump from a building and because he's shoot dodging he can survive. This is a more realistic, fat version of Max Payne. I really do like the direction they took Max Payne in this game. Everything about him is more gruff, he's more cynical, and despite the fact that in the previous title he seemingly got over the death of his wife and daughter, in this game it's hit him just as hard as a ton of bricks or a truck hits a cute anime girl in an isekai show. Wait on a second. Max, what the fuck is that? Fuck's sake. Here I was about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death. And I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. These guys weren't messing around. This place was like Baghdad with G-strings. A couple of more seconds and I'd have given some poor street cleaner a crappy start to his day. This 
One thing that Rockstar Games has always been very, very good at is world building. And of course, with our boy Maximum Pain over here having an emotional rehaul in this title, he needs a new playground to run around in, blowing people's fucking faces off with Ingram Mac 10s. So we've been given Sao Paulo, Brazil as the new location, as well as some missions that take place in New York City. The fact that each level of this game feels like somewhere that would exist in real life just proves how good Rockstar Games is at world building and level design. But it also proves how haphazard everything really is. Not in a bad way, but in a kind of realistic way. Every level in the previous titles perfectly suited Max Payne's abilities and skill sets. For example, the levels were never too enclosed in reality. Everything kind of had this open stretch to it, so that you could have plenty of space to shoot dodge, there were plenty of ledges, there was never too many interior details to take notice of, because there needed to be enough space for Max to put his skill sets to use. But in this game, if you don't shoot dodge in a correct position, you will fucking bounce off the wall and you will give this big, bold man a concussion. It's impossible to state how detailed these levels are. The fact that I feel like I've been to Sao Paulo, Brazil just by playing Max Payne, and the fact that I never want to go there again because of Max Payne, means that, well, thanks Max Payne, you are the best travel guide I could ever have for that part of South America. Everything from the fact that all of the New York levels are caked in a heavy layer of snow, to the fact that everything feels so dark and depressing despite the fact that the graphics are so nice to look at even to this day. Wow, Rockstar, you really, really know what you're doing. Whether it's Grand Theft Auto 3 or Casa City for Manhunt, Rockstar's always going to provide you with an interesting world and some intriguing characters. Remember how before I said there were a ton of cutscenes in this game? There are a ton of cutscenes in Max Payne 3. All I have to say is if you want to make a movie, then make a fucking movie! But they are really good, I really like the cutscenes in Max Payne 3, but I also hate the fact there are so many of them there, god fucking damn it! You can't get anything right, Rockstar! The biggest problem I have with Max Payne 3 isn't how they change the character. I personally believe that any long-running character needs to evolve over the years. It isn't the fact that it's set in an area of the world that most people wouldn't expect Max Payne to be taking place in. My biggest problem is the amount of cutscenes that are there, and how they separate and distract the gameplay segments to the point where it's almost impossible to actually get anything out of Max Payne 3 as a game. Which is the biggest problem, because Rockstar Games has made one of the greatest third-person shooting games of all time here, and they keep fucking hiding it from me. I feel like I'm playing a demo version of Max Payne 3. Hello, where's the rest of the game? No, we're left with a couple of hours of gameplay sandwiched between two of the fattest thighs of all time, and those thighs just happen to be seven hours worth of cutscenes. Even the side modes that you need to play through the game once to unlock everything in won't let you skip these cutscenes. You have to watch them. And don't get me wrong, these cutscenes are impeccably made. The graphics are great, the voice acting is some of the greatest I've ever heard in video game history, and the music and animation and graphics to accompany them are some of the nicest I've seen from just Rockstar in general, to the point where I appreciate this game's cutscenes more than games like Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption the original. Max Payne 3 really, really has it, but it has too much of it. To an extent, it almost feels like Rockstar was too 
in a way, embarrassed of their own abilities to make a great third-person shooter, because it feels like they're hiding it from us as much as possible. You start getting into it, and then it pulls you straight the fuck out. It completely kills any possibility of replays in the future. I've never gone back to Max Payne 3 after playing it the first time, because every aspect of it is overshadowed by... Ah, oh, fuck, I have to watch cutscenes every five minutes. What's even worse is that it almost kills your need or want to play any more of the game. I've never finished a game in one sit-through. I've always taken more than a couple of sit-throughs to play, even the shortest of games. But Max Payne 3 was a game I almost gave up on because the missions are so long and have so many cutscenes that I almost never felt I was getting enough gameplay out of this video game experience. There's no... That no matter how many wall dressings or how much detail you put into your world, how, many, how great the voice acting is, if the game isn't satisfying to play because there's not enough gameplay to it, I'm not going to enjoy it. But I still love and recommend Max Payne 3. Because it's just a good game. Everything about it is perfectly crafted from the ground up. And there's also a tit or two in there for anyone that wants to, you know, search for them. Despite its small list of shortcomings, Max Payne 3 is still one of the most underrated and genuinely greatest gaming experiences I've probably ever had. This game is on my top 5 or 10 list at this point in time, and I don't think there'll be ever a game that knocks it off, even in the same genre. When you're not being forced to watch a documentary on the d fucking economic state of Sao Paulo, Brazil, you'll be taking part in some of the greatest third-person shooting action you've ever seen in a video game. And you'll be doing it in some of the best maps that have ever been devised and developed by Rockstar Games. This game genuinely is something that if you haven't already added it to the collection, you definitely should. And there's the occasional breast in there if you're a lucky boy.